Hello and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. A few years ago on my other channel, Game Hut, I showed a playthrough of the first level of the cancelled sequel to Mickey Mania, and another video of a Doom style level that was a prototype that ended up being used in Toy Story. I have since found the start of another level of what would have been Mickey Mania 2, so I thought I'd share everything I have on the cancelled game and how the effects were achieved. The new level that I found was to be based on the Mickey Mouse cartoon Shanghai. You can see from this still from the cartoon that Mickey and Minnie are kidnapped by Pete and have to escape from his boat. This would have been the premise for this level. So here is the prototype for the level. This is basically all that exists for it, but what is noticeable is that it has a great 3D look to it. I clearly ended up using this effect for Toy Story as you can see here. I've covered how this effect was programmed in other videos, but I've also found the graphics set for the level which makes it easy to explain how the effect works. So here are all the 8x8 tiles that are used in the level. You can see there is even a treasure map on the wall which hasn't been used yet in the level as we never got round to putting it in. Now, if we highlight the graphics used for the floor, we can rearrange them into the right order and we can build a long piece of floor like this. Now I'll highlight the amount of floor you'd see on the game screen here in blue, the rest would be out of sight. By using the screen's horizontal scroll registers, we can distort the screen like this and then scroll it from left to right. The very distorted part of the floor becomes less distorted until it matches exactly the starting image, at which point we can snap it all back and repeat. What I like about how the effect is used here versus Toy Story is that you can see the thickness of the planks of the floor at the top and bottom of the screen. Everything you can see on screen is just the sprites for Mickey and one background layer for the rest, which leaves another whole background layer for all the hazards and objects you'd interact with and climb over in the level. We just never got round to making more of it. Once you had completed this level, you would go into a 3D level that I prototyped here. You can see the graphics are very similar to the last level, even down to the map on the wall and the portholes. However, Mickey wouldn't have been running around with a chain gun. I was just having fun with the prototype, and this is the demo I sent to Disney just to shock them. In the actual level, Mickey would have been throwing marbles or perhaps sword fighting using a fish. Now this 3D code ended up being used here in Toy Story. I've made a video explaining how the walls are drawn, which I'll link to in the description, but I'll quickly explain how the floor and ceiling were drawn. To make it easier to see, I'll remove the walls and make the ceiling and floor draw with white lines. Firstly, the floor is just a mirror image of the ceiling, so that halves the draw time already. Secondly, the lines drawn are two pixels long horizontally. This is because the smallest piece of data you can quickly write is one byte, and on the Sega machine, one byte represents two pixels, so to keep things quick, I plot double pixels at a time. So, I do a bit of maths to work out what lines to draw and where, and then depending on whether the line goes up, or down, or left, or right, and whether it goes off the side of the screen, I pick an optimised line draw routine for just that individual case. I repeat for all the lines, and there we go. Now, if you look in the final demo, you can see that the lines are shaded and get darker the further away they get from the screen, which would mean a lot of checking and colour changes to get this effect. But what I actually do is fill the whole screen with black before I begin, and instead of drawing pixels, I erase the black leaving holes. Then I use this parallax layer, which only gets seen through the holes I've drawn, which gives you this effect. The wobbly blue line in the middle is the water you can see out of the portholes, which I get for free, as the portholes don't get big enough on screen to reveal the shading I use for the ceiling and floor. So those are the two sections that would have made up the Shanghai section of the game. There would have also been two sections focused on the cartoon Two Gun Mickey. The second of these sections was to be a horse chase section, but I don't have a prototype for that. But I do have the first section, and both this and the horse chase would have used this 8x8 tile set. So here's the first section. So this uh, we went pretty far with. You can see we've got the marble throwing in here from the Mickey Mania 1. You can jump around, you can push objects around. Here's a TNT crate, which you can push and interact with. When marbles hit those crates, they, uh, they explode it. Um, but you can also use it as a platform. So you can see you can move it over here, and then we can jump on these platforms. And then there's a collectible. These horseshoes, if you shoot them with a marble, will release uh, a letter. So that's M, and it will spell the word Mickey at the end. If you get all of them, I guess you get a bonus. There's the TNT exploding. And so uh, move through the level. Normally there'd be enemies to defeat. Uh, we didn't get any of the enemies put in. There's the hidden eye. And then over here is a new mechanic we added for Mickey Mania 2, which is a, a pole you can hang off. And then you can jump from pole to pole and make your way over hazards like this, this wall here. Okay, and as you make your way through the level, here's a TNT crate. Like I said, you can push them, but this one is fixed in place. So what do you do? You can throw marbles and it explodes. And then the explosion sets fire to the rope and that burns the rope free and you can use the rope to climb over 
the obstacle. Here's a load of barrels of TNT. You've got to be careful because if you throw marbles around these, they explode. So obviously you'd have enemies here you'd have to defeat, but you'd have to be careful because if you were up there at the time, you could get uh, blown up like that by the ricochet or the marble. Okay, now this is a tricky little jump to get to these swing poles again and then over the hazard. You make your way past the barns. There's another collectible up here, this horseshoe. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, further back, there we go. That's the Sea of Mickey. I'm not going to get all of these, by the way. Um, the parallax layer um, has nice horizontal scrolls to give it a sense of depth, and we also continue it into the foreground here, so you get the depth of the floor. Now it's just turned night, and you can see these fireflies have turned up and are flying around the light sources. If you move away, though, they will loosely follow Mickey, and then if a light source comes on screen, they'll go after that instead. Um, so just nice little touches. They don't really do much, it's just for fun. Um, right, so we have to get over, I assume, yeah. So we need to go find a way over these poles. Um, see, again, the fireflies following Mickey around. Uh, I guess we could have used wasps and made it a hazard, but I thought it was just nice. I mean, this is all really early stuff. We'd hardly really started the game. Um, this this is going to be really tricky to get. You've got to kind of jump off this little platform and then double back to get up to the horseshoe. Um, I don't think I can do it. But, uh, oh yeah, just about. But now I'm too high to hit it. So you have to then jump off and hope and then inevitably miss it. So, I mean, they're there to get some bonus at the end of the level. Right, same problem here. There's a rope tied up. We walk down the level and there's a TNT barrel. And now the fire's brighter because it's night time and the palette's changed. Um, the start of the level started black and white, like the first game, and became colour, and then we've added this thing of the time of day changing as you move through the level. Okay, so we'll put the barrel here, and again, sets fire to the rope. And then you have to jump on the rope, and then jump onto these hang poles, and then make your way across this hazardous rooftop. Now this bit, oh, just about made it. Tricky little puzzles. <laughs> we always made these games hard. Um, and then over the hazard. And then again, you defeat some bad guys, go after some of these horseshoes. This is okay. Um, more lamps. I guess the fireflies would turn up. Make your way over here. And then this section here, you'd have a stampede of cattle or horses running past you. And you'd have to make your way across these poles without falling into them and taking damage. And there you go, and that would be the end of the level. That would then go on to a horse chase level, and on we'd go through the rest of the game. And so that's everything I have on Mickey Mania 2, the game that was cancelled because there was an opportunity to make Toy Story with the new movie coming out instead. I hope you've enjoyed this. As always, please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd want to see or other videos you'd want me to make. But that's all for this episode of Coding Secrets. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.